Hello and welcome back to another Oasis Top Tips. Did you know that you can define cut sections within Oasis D3 plot, which can be especially useful when looking at models with lots of parts or complex deformations? Today I'm going to show you the cut section tool which is built into D3 plot and also into primary. I have the Honda Accord model open in D3 plot version 18. Um, I'll just play it to show you. We have an animation of it crashing into a barrier here. And the cut section tool can be really useful when looking at analyses like this, where you have uh, complex deformations and you want to understand what's going on. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use that and how I might um, interrogate a model like this. To start with, I'll just pause the animation and take it back to the initial plot state. And then I can access the cut section options by going to the toolbar at the top right and clicking cut section. And I'm greeted with a cut sections uh, menu, which has various options, which I'll run through. Um, so to start with, we have the toggle, which toggles the cut section on and off. Um, so in this case, uh, the default is constant X, uh, which is like saying a slice through a particular X coordinate, in this case, zero. Um, there are other ways of changing those, so uh, we can have constant y and z uh, to go with the global coordinate systems. We could also define a plane using three nodes, um, or we could define it with an origin vector, or there's this ls method which uh, defines it using three vectors. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to use a constant z, um, and what I can do is I could actually uh, use a node on the model to define this rather than typing in a coordinate here. So I can go pick visible, and then I can just uh, pick a node that seems suitable. Um, and here we have then a cut plane defined. And the cut plane, you can see we have these uh, shells uh, which are um, displayed at the cut plane. We also have these outlines, uh, gray outlines on the top and the bottom. And I can toggle these using um, the options here. So uh, I often go for omit, omit, which is quite nice. Then you get a nice thin slice. And if I press 1 and then 8 auto center, I get a nice top down view. Um, and you can see the coordinate here was um, picked from what that node was, so 561.4. Um, but I could actually tweak that as well and change it. So I can use the dragging options by pressing D um, or by clicking this option here. And then with the left mouse button, I can drag this up and down through the model. So if I then change to a side view, um, you can see that changing. And if I give it a bit of an incline, then you can see I'm going through a slice through the car and you can see the coordinate is changing there. So now I'll get back to top view here. I'll show you some of the other options. Um, so we have uh, the outline one, which we've seen, uh, which just draws the outline of um, whatever in this case is um, above the cut plane, positive, and then the one, the other one, if I swapped it around, would be the negative side. Um, then normal is just like a shaded view, and then transparent um, is a sort of shaded view with transparency that can be set uh, down here, so you can toggle that. Um, and then if you wanted to revert them, you can just use the swap option. But as I said, I often go for omit, omit, because it gives you quite a nice clear view. Now, what you can see here, these lines, are, the colors are taken from um, the parts, and these lines are actually uh, representing shells, um, and they're just using a fixed thickness at the moment. Um, so that is defined down here using a thick, fixed thickness of 10. If I set that a bit bigger, maybe 50, you can see that the thickness is increased, but um, maybe it gets a bit difficult to see or confusing. Um, so you can toggle that um, if the lines are a bit thin for your liking. Um, but what I like to use is the true thickness. And um, you can actually use this if you have um, the, a file called a ZTF file, which is a file created by Primer. And uh, what it does is it contains uh, information about uh, the model, such as um, shell thicknesses and things like that. And I've still got my dragging options on here, so I can zoom in. And then if I maybe come here, you can see that that thickness has actually been uh, applied. So this um, part here is a thick, thicker um, um, shells than, than this outer part here. Um, and then, so at the moment we're just using a Z coordinate, but I could also um, rotate this uh, cut plane 
um, and since I've got the dragging options, if I look, press this um, question mark thing here, you can see that the left mouse button does translation in the local Z, the middle mouse uh, does rotation around X, and the right mouse about Y. So these are the local coordinates, and if you're wondering how to see those, you can turn on this wireframe down here, then you can see where that's defined. So you can actually see the triad is located um, well, in Y and X, exactly where that node was that I picked. And the Z has now been changed because we've been translating it up and down. Um, but now if I use uh, the middle mouse button, you'll see that's rotating around that local X. And then the right mouse button is rotating around that local Y. So we can end up with some interesting cuts here. Um, and then you can also turn on uh, thick cuts. Um, so that just essentially uh, goes either side of the cut, half either side. So if I change that to 100, then I've got a cut which is 100 mil thick and 50 mil either side. Um, and then you might think it's a bit hard to actually uh, get a nice uh, view of that cut plane uh, from the angle. So there's actually some nice options here. Um, if you go to other, and then you can click on view on plane, um, in which case that orients it so that we have um, the cut plane. Um, so you can see the local X, Y, and the Z is pointing up there. And there are also some other um, nice tools in this option. So location plot, and this doesn't work if you're animating because it um, uh, just creates a single view which um, uh, is refreshed when you change the view. But if you get a location plot, then you can then see with the graticule on uh, where this cut section is. So you can see um, in the ZX plane, there's a bit of an incline there, and you can see uh, the ZY plane and, and so on. So if you've got some complex cuts, it might be nice to output something that looks maybe a bit like this. Um, and then you can also do some uh, other things. So if I go back to display and turn off that thick cut, um, and then I'll reset this actually. So you can see it's defaulted now to an origin and vector. I'll reset this to um, a constant, let's go for a constant Y this time. Um, so slices through the car and I'll go for just one bang in the middle uh, at zero. So if I change my view and uh, look from the side of the car, you can see I have a, a nice slice through there. Uh, I'll turn the wireframe off now just um, so that we have a bit of a clearer view. And what we can now do is we can turn on multiple cuts and so here, uh, this is basically just saying the um, plus or minus of infinity in a sense at the moment, but you could um, terminate your cuts earlier. Um, and it's creating a constant spacing. So if I wanted to have cuts every 100 mil, for example, I could do that. And then looking top down, you can see it looks like a, a grid. And turning down, you see a bit of a slice. Or new in version um, 18, you can also create a custom spacing. Um, so here I clicked on the custom spacing and then edit spacing and you can see that um, it set five um, for me there. So if I wanted to um, add some more, I can enter them in this green box. Um, so I might want one outboard at 800, say, and another one at minus 800. Um, so you can see those were created. And then I might want to change some of these as well inside. So I might actually want one at zero and then... Um, I can also get rid of this one because I don't need that anymore. Um, so there are all these sort of um, nice things you can do with cut sections. Um, and this, as I said, is a new option within version 18. So if you're used to making uh, multiple cuts, um, this can really enhance um, the sorts of uh, results and things you get. And of course, uh, you can animate through these states. Um, so you, it could be quite useful for comparing things uh, through different cuts. Cool, and then um, a couple more things I'll show you. So uh, we have this exclude option, and uh, this is basically saying things that we essentially don't want to cut, we want them to just remain. Uh, so in this case, I'll maybe turn on solid elements, and you'll see this part at the front, and a few springs are uh, reintroduced. Um, and so uh, you, get, you can get these nice effects where um, you can see how uh, a solid is deforming, but you don't have the sort of messiness of all of the shells around there. Um, which uh, makes the view a bit confusing. Um, and sometimes I find cut sections are even just useful if, say, you wanted to just look at half of the car, um, then I could maybe go and turn off those multiple cuts, and then I could go normal 
um, and um, I need to turn off uh, that as well so it does cut through solids and swap these around and now I have a nice view through half of the car instead of uh, what I might have otherwise done is try to um, get a top view and then go blank and then elements and it just gets a bit um, uh, sort of faffy to do something like that plus you get a lovely clean cut here so um, there are other other reasons why you might want to use a cut section um, and then the last thing which I'll just touch on here is um, the forces window um, so um, you've uh, we've defined a cut within d3 plot and we can actually output force information um, so if I click on here forces um, then it will show me all the parts that are being cut through and also the x y and z um, uh, components of force and also the moments um, and in this case it's uh, using a, a locally defined system so to find that one out you turn on the wireframe as I'm showing and um, so you can see that all the parts that are cut through and then the different forces uh, there and um, you could write those out to a file if that was of interest and um, this is at this particular time step and um, so again if you actually wanted to have force information for the whole uh, analysis say you forgot to make a cut section initially then you can actually write that out with XY data and then for example data versus time and then the cut section option now has this csec1 which is actually your user defined cut section so you could click on that and then ask out for X forces or any of these um, outputs here and um, so that's another thing to do but note that it's only uh, at the resolution of your plot states. So if you've got um, not very many plot states, then there's limited value in that sort of uh, output. OK, so I hope you found that really useful looking at cut sections um, within uh, D3 plot. And Primer as well, as I mentioned at the beginning, also has uh, lots of these functionality. Of course, it doesn't have things like force outputs because um, it's a, a static model, there's no um, dynamic states, but um, it's again useful if you wanted to look at a bit of a model and not have to uh, blank stuff and um, if you want a nice cut plane. So cut sections are um, really useful and I'd um, definitely recommend uh, you using them in your models. So I hope that's been useful and I'll see you next time.